This week on Phytex Tech Tuesday, we're going to go over the do's and the don'ts when installing an EFI system. When it comes to installing a Phytech EFI system, there's some things that you want to focus on, on what you want to try to do and not do. Here are some of the do's and don'ts that are on the top priority list of ours. You do want to hook up the battery wire of the EFI system directly to the battery. You want to avoid going to the back of an alternator or to a fuse block because you want to ensure the most voltage possible to the EFI system. After all, it is running your engine lack of power will make the system shut off and so will your engine. Don't use aluminum fuel lines. Aluminum fuel lines are generally rated for 25 psi. All Phytech fuel injection systems run well more than that. Some at 45 psi, others at 58 psi. Do mount an inline fuel pump as low and as close to the tank as possible. An electric fuel pump is designed to push fuel, not pull. So you want to create a good gravity siphon to that fuel pump to ensure that it has adequate access of fuel to push it to the EFI system. Don't run the tack wire parallel to any ignition component or any other wiring in the vehicle in the engine compartment. That tack wire is designed to read a tack signal from the ignition system. If it's ran parallel to something like an ignition wire or an alternator wire or electric fan wire, there can be crosstalk from radio frequencies that will skew that reading and make the system get a false RPM signal. Do run resistor spark plugs. Resistor spark plugs prevent the emission of EMI. That EMI will impact that tack wire and give a false RPM reading. Don't use leaded fuel. Leaded fuel will plug up the oxygen sensor and the oxygen sensor is needed to tell the computer how rich or lean the engine's running. Do check all of your grounds on the engine prior to doing your installation. The EFI system needs to be grounded well to ensure that it operates properly. Don't run a ballast resisted ignition or anything that's other than a 12 volt ignition system. The low voltage prevents the tack wire from being able to read an accurate RPM signal. So that means no points and no ignition system that uses a ballast resistor or a resistor wire. Do consider increasing the amperage output of your alternator. The EFI system is going to draw up to about 25 amps. So if you're already taxing your electrical system, you want to improve your alternator so you can support the additional load on your electrical system. Don't route any of your wiring against any heat or moving components. Keep the Phytech wiring away from the exhaust, so the headers, and away from moving components like the belt drive on the front of the engine. Do hook up your key wire to a source where you get 12 volts key on and cranking. You want to avoid any voltage drop during the crank process. If it does, you're going to shut off the computer when you're trying to start the engine. So when you're going to hook up this wire, use a voltmeter and check that position and make sure that that wire that you're going to hook up for key maintains above 10 volts during cranking. And the most important do is to start with a good running engine. If the engine isn't running well, has low compression, has leaking valves, if it's not a good running engine and you're just switching from a carburetor to EFI to try to correct that, it's not going to work. An EFI system needs to be paired with a good working engine as well. So that concludes the Phytex do's and don'ts when installing an EFI system. Be sure to share some of your experiences down below in the comments section, some of the do's and don'ts that you found when installing Phytech fuel injection. If you have any other questions, please comment them down below as well. And the most important do, do check out more of our videos at phytechefi.com.